It's uh, really, really good to be here with you uh, uh, this weekend. My first time in Canterbury. So, yeah, very, very excited to be here. Uh, we felt there was, Esther and I felt there was something significant about being in Canterbury. And uh, as we started the worship, I just felt the Lord saying, I want my city back. And so... <laughs> I'm going to preach just to this lady here because that's the kind of encouragement that will get a good message. So, yeah. So, Father, I pray. I don't know all of the history here. I haven't been here before, but we felt even before we came that there was something in your heart more than just this one event. And I thank you that you love this city. I want to thank you that your eyes are watching over this city. And so just for a moment, we, we want to align ourselves with your will. And we just declare over Canterbury, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. I pray that it would become a seat of kingdom power. I pray that this would be a place where the lordship of Jesus, his leadership, is recognized. I pray that it be a place where heaven comes to earth here, that it becomes a thin place of your spirit. I pray that it become a place where uh, the miraculous, the supernatural, uh, the will of God, his dominion is seen and felt and known. Uh, Father, I pray for those who are followers of Christ in this city that they would align themselves with your purpose, that we would all realize we have a king who we serve and there is a kingdom we belong to. We're not building our own churches or our own ministries. In fact, the king only has one kingdom. And I pray that we would find ourselves coming into alignment with the king's purpose in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that the worship moves you. I thank you that the praying makes a difference. I thank you that our coming together into one space and uh, just being as believers gathered in a space in one accord, that it has an impact on the spiritual atmosphere of this city. No matter how many there are, as we come together, you have promised where two or three gather in your name, that you are there with them. And Father, I want to thank you. This is a word that Esther had uh, this morning when we were praying. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. And the people of Israel at that time, they said, we will not walk in it. But we don't want to have that response. We'll be like, we'll walk in it. We ask you, Lord, help us at the midst of crossroads. We can go straight forward the way we've been going. We can take a left or a right. We could go back on ourselves. And you're asking us with all the choices that we have that we would ask you for the ancient paths. So we ask you, Lord, I pray for a spirit of wisdom, Holy Spirit spirit of wisdom and revelation for those in this room, for those in Canterbury, we just into this atmosphere that there would be the spirit of wisdom and revelation and that every veil would be lifted and that we would see the ancient path. We would see the good eternal way choose to walk into it. Father, I declare over this atmosphere today, stand here, I come in and I just declare revelation, wisdom, encounters, veils to be lifted. I pray for the dream life of this city to be impacted by heaven in Jesus' name. I pray for revelation to come, visions to come, dreams to come break into darkness with the kingdom of God. And Father, I pray that even, uh, I know there are faithful people in this city like you have in many, many cities and towns. 
simply join my prayer with this and declare that there's a shift that carries on, that begins today. A shift in the spirit, a shaking of strongholds and a coming of the kingdom in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You, you could very easily just join me, agree with me, as two or three agree. We release that sense of the Holy Spirit as the one who brings wisdom, revelation, understanding. You know, we can make decrees in the Spirit, especially when they're in line with God's Word, and we stand as followers of Christ, that our words filled with faith have the potential to change atmospheres in the spirit realm. I, I don't think those who live double-minded can do that, uh, but I do believe those who walk close to the Lord, they have a proximity to the King, and so their words become powerful as they are prompted by the Spirit to speak them out. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not, I'm just like you, I'm a follower of Christ, I don't need a title. I love him. I'm seeking to walk with him more and more. But I'm also beginning to realize that if I would agree with him, make a decree, that actually his word in my mouth is as powerful as his word in his mouth. And I think the Lord wants the church to realize again who they are, what they're called to. I'm not in any way saying that we are gods. I am saying that we belong to God. He lives inside of us. And the more we live with him in union, in oneness, in joining, that we become his mouthpiece on the earth.